So Tim, why don't you tell us a little bit about the structure of this particular greenhouse? You can sort of start with the baseboards and work your way up and uh, framing materials and the type of glazing material you use. Okay. Well, this house is about 20 years old, uh, very simple construction. Uh, I should say we try to keep it as low cost as possible because since we're not operating a full year round, in fact, we only most of our houses are only in operation about six months out of the year. It doesn't behoove us to have fancy, expensive glazings and 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 just a general structure that's real expensive. We try to keep it as inexpensive as possible. So we've got a galvanized structure, pipe structure. The pipes are about two inches in diameter. They're driven into the ground about three feet down. Attached to them in this particular house is not even pressure treated wood. This is actually still a rough board hemlock that we grow here in Vermont, uh, native hemlock, very rot resistant. And then uh, up about five feet, we have a shoulder board, which is pressure treated. Uh, that hemlock has since rotted. And the reason we have that is because we will roll these sides up in the summer. We try to reduce our costs as much as possible, and that includes in summertime or springtime, rolling up the sides and turning off our fans and doing a passive ventilation. Now, uh, we have basically here, uh, the plastic you find in here is a, um, is a little sophisticated in the sense that it's a four-year poly now and it has uh, two layers with uh, air blown into it uh, to keep you know, create a certain amount of dead air space for a little insulation. The layer that's on the inside of it has an infrared transmission to try to keep the, the heat inside. It's treated with a uh, chemical to keep the heat inside and also has an anti-condensation -con um, uh, treatment too, so it won't just drip straight down, it runs off the side. And then the outside, uh, has another layer of six mil poly, uh, which is more conventional. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about the environmental controls you have uh, for temperature control in okay. the greenhouse? This particular house uh, has two heaters. They are propane, uh, which is what we've always chosen to use primarily uh, because of their uh, very their mobile, simple, uh, easy to handle, uh, tanks can be brought in, brought out, uh, just uh, houses are all built over a 20, 25 year period and so they're not scattered around but as in most complexes they weren't designed all to be here and so you add one tank one year, one tank another year, that kind of thing. But we have two propane heaters and then we use horizontal airflow fans and we have four of those placed in a in a proper position to maximize the airflow around the house in this direction, just like this. And they work, they're fantastic. The heat down at this end and down at that end will only vary within a couple of degrees. Now, as far as ventilation, we have two fans at the east end and vents down at this end. But the first stage, there's three stages of ventilation. The first stage, the fan comes on at this end and there is a a tube down the center here. This is not used for heating. This is a, an inexpensive form of a fan jet. It, it, it sucks the air down the tube and then dumps it down into the house and then the horizontal airflow mixes that cold air up. And that we use for cold weather ventilation. That'll be used a large part of the month of March. For your winter cooling. Winter cooling in April. A moment ago you were telling us about some of the environmental controls in this greenhouse and there's one more that we haven't talked about yet and that's that you use in-ground heating. Uh, so if you could tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, this house gets planted in uh, mid-March, anywhere from the Ides of March, when old Julius Caesar bit the bullet, <laughs> to the first day of spring. So somewhere between the 15th of March and the 21st. And the ground in here is about 40 degrees, and it needs to be 60 to 70 degrees for growing the tomatoes. We devised a very simple little system for heating the, the soil. And it just involves a little conventional hot water heater, 50 gallons, that's used in most homes. And we heat the water here and then use this little circulating pump. It has several thermometers to be able to read the different temperatures coming and going. And it comes out, circulates out through here, comes down the pipes and enters the soil right down here. And the pipe that's in the soil, which is about two feet down, is just your regular 
black polyethylene pipe. It's uh, three quarter inches. This is the header, which is a little bigger. And it just circulates up and down. In this particular house, there's four beds that are 96 feet long, and it goes back and forth uh, circulating this hot water. At the start, we'll have the hot water at about 100 degrees, and the soil will be about 40 degrees. And the returning, the water will go out at, say, 100 degrees to start with, but very quickly it starts to, the heater can't keep up with it, and the soil, it actually drops the temperature of the hot water heater. So it eventually it starts off, it comes back at 50 degrees. Well, the first time it comes back maybe at 90 degrees, then 80 degrees, then 70, slowly drops. And then eventually, after about three or four days, it starts to build back up again. So now it's starting to be 45, 50, 55, 60. And within about five days, it's up to 70 degrees in here, in the soil. Okay, well, we're looking at the first greenhouse we built right here. And this is a very different kind of structure from, say, the plastic houses behind, uh, behind me here. This was built in 1981. It was back at a time when we were extremely conscious of, of the use of uh, fossil fuels and how expensive it was to, to burn fossil fuels. Uh, this is built, these are, the glass itself is thermoplane. Uh, they were sliding glass doors that we fixed in place. The, um, all around the side of it has, uh, it's buried with uh, blue board. Uh, fiberglass uh, board, uh, bead board it's called, uh, and then it has six inches of fiberglass in the walls on the north side and on the east and the west walls, and uh, again six inches of fiberglass in the ceiling. Looks a little bit like a, a sugar house actually. Uh, it was a passive solar house so that before we put any kind of heat in it, we put 50 gallon drums of water in the back wall and they would absorb the sun's rays and then protect the uh, greenhouse from freezing. And then it was ventilated from the sun by opening up vents in the side and letting the air come in and then go up. There's vents that come down at the top and it would allow the air to just go right up through like a chimney. Now, a, few, a number of years later, we got a little bit lazy and decided to put in a mechanical fan, which we just heard, and vent and a little, little Modine heater to make life a little easier for ourselves. But this house, which is 40 feet by 20 feet, and uh, here's Kobe here. <laughs> here's our dog, our Bernice. He loves it being nice and cold out. When it was a um, uh, 40 foot by 20 foot house, and it can, be 10 to, it can be 10 to 15 below zero, it will not freeze inside the greenhouse, even if it doesn't have heat at all. It will not freeze. It will stay above 32 degrees. Now we want to heat it up to about 60 degrees. So the average cost at, with temperatures down around 10 below zero every night, maybe down to zero, uh, will run about 10 or $15 a week. So it, it uh, is extremely efficient, energy efficient house.